My next guest was the man on the receiving end of that pass that you just heard from Vince Sutton, Gene Newberry, former Alabama quarterback, and tied in my next guest. I guess that never gets old, does it, Gene? It never does, Gary. I can hear that over and over and uh, gets brought up a lot still. It's a great, great moment for me. No doubt about it. Um, you were on my television show, Crimson Tide Kickoff, this past Saturday, and we previewed the Ole Miss game. Uh, we both felt like it was going to be an incredible football game, and it was. I, I just want to get your your takeaway from that game uh, because we just heard you were part of a great comeback yourself when it looked like Alabama was down and out in Lexington, Kentucky, and you came back and won back in 88. That's a history, and that is a tradition of Alabama football to never never quit. But when it went 24-3 after Hertz got rocked on what maybe should have been a targeting call, but anyway, the play was not whistled, and uh, Ole Miss's young blood picks up the ball and runs it in for a touchdown after Haynes got the sack and the forced fumble, and it's 24 to three with just you know a couple of minutes left in the in the first half. Were you like I thinking, wow, this might be it? I'll tell you, Gary. I'll be honest with you. I'm the eternal optimist, and I was I really felt like if we could just somehow get the ball back and score right before halftime and just cut a little bit closer. That getting the ball, you know, to begin the second half, that we could come back. You know, when the when you get down like we were in Lexington, it was seventeen to, to zero at halftime. You don't really look at it the same way as you would with maybe four minutes left in the game, and kind of the way Ole Miss is at the end of the game. No one, you got to get an onside kick. There's a different urgency for that. When it happens in the second quarter, you just got to keep doing the same things you're doing. You got to speed up a little bit, you know, because of how much time's left in the first half. But I don't think that you, you look at it like, oh, no, I mean, if we don't do something on this play, it could be over with. You've got to stay under control. The coaches, you know, did a great job of saying, hey, let's just keep running this offense we got. And, uh, of course, you know, with some of the turnovers, we were, we were able to get back into it. But, you know, I, I was just – I was so excited when Eddie uh, Jackson returned that punt. I just – I had this great feeling when he started running with it. Uh, and I just – that just turned the whole game around. You know, there were a lot of big plays in that game, crucial plays – but after the touchdown, Alabama came back and scored in three plays, and it happened and due in great part to Speaks, the defensive lineman, got a roughing penalty. They didn't call the touchdown back, but they did mark off 15 yards on the kickoff, and then the kicker kicked it out of bounds. So Alabama started that possession at the 50-yard line. I think a lot of Alabama fans at that point were still in shock, but they go right down and score You know, in three or four plays. How big was that? Oh, that's huge. And, and, you know, I think what happens, too, on the other end of it, you know, when you're behind, you, you don't want to come back. But when you're ahead, you also want to keep playing hard. But there's still that human nature just maybe to relax a little bit, knowing, you know, kind of like maybe Alabama did at the end of the game up by 18. But I think Ole Miss said, hey, you know, all we got to do is just kind of prevent everything. And, and I think we kind of snuck up on them on that. So there, there's a lot of ways to, you know, look at football games. And that was just one, like you said earlier, it's just it was just an ebb and flow up and down and no matter who you were a fan of if there were certain times you felt like okay you know we're going to win this game and uh it was it was just it's it's a fun you know SEC weekend all the way around and I just I love that I, mean, I love we came out on top but just as a fan I love watching it Gene Newberry I guess here on the Gary Harris show thinking back to when you were a player and and I'm I'm curious to get your answer on this and, of course, Alabama's a bad matchup for a lot of people because of the history, the tradition, the talent. But do you sometimes just look at a team and just feel like, man, they're just not a good matchup for us? I kind of get that feeling with Ole Miss, and I'll tell you why. Um, they've recruited well there, but Alabama you know, plays a lot of man-to-man defense against them with a guy like Chad Kelly and those big wide receivers, you can do everything right and they can still make a play on you. And, uh, you know, Alabama gets out of there with a win, but do you think that there's any credence to that, that Ole Miss is just not a good matchup for Alabama? Well, it's a tough matchup when you have receivers like they do. And, you know, the touchdown pass that Chad Kelly threw, you know, down that right sideline in the end zone, and, you know, Eddie Jackson tried to get over there, and Marlin had, you know, fairly good coverage on the guy. But it was just a, it was just a perfect, perfect throw. throw. If a quarterback can put it over the shoulder of the receiver where the, where the defensive back could not tip it or, or pick it off, if he can get his hands up and catch it, sometimes they're just plays you can't defend. And, and that's why as a defensive back, you've got to have a short-term memory. And it, as great as Deion Sanders and, you know, Daryl Green and all these NFL Hall of Famers, there's times they got burned. 
and, and, you know, you don't remember those as much as the times they had how many interceptions on the year, but that's a very tough position to play. And, uh, you know, when you got a 6 4 receiver on one side and another guy that's, you know, probably 6 1, 6 2 and can jump out of the gym, you're exactly right. It's a very tough matchup. And if you make just the slightest mistake, footwork or your technique, you know, you can give up a, a long 30 yard play or even a touchdown. So, uh, yeah, Ole Miss was a very tough matchup for us. But, you know, if we, you know, just continue to pound them on, I think, on the running game, uh, hopefully at the end of that game, maybe it wouldn't have been as close or they wouldn't have been able to come back as much. How big for Alabama was it in the second half that that run game got established and, and looked dominant? How important is that going forward? Oh, I think it's huge. And I think, you know, I'm sure Coach Saban's probably brought it up uh, in speaking to the media before. But, you know, each team you want to establish an identity. And I think this year to this point, you know, we, we've kind of shuffled the offensive line. And I noticed against Ole Miss that, you know, Pierce Baker was back in the starting lineup. Uh, you know, apparently, you know, they feel like uh, Bradley Bozeman's doing a great job at center. And uh, Alphonse Taylor's back after that one-game suspension. You know, he started his second game. So I think they're saying, okay, this is the best five guys we have. And let's start working on, you know, continuity and get this running game going. Because, you know, uh, it's, it's hard to start with a true freshman at right tackle. But, I mean, the offensive line – move the ball, you know, against Ole Miss, and they have a very good defensive front. So I think that was a start of hopefully now we'll start you know, just really grinding after some teams and establish the running game from this, you know, this point forward. There was a lot of gnashing of teeth going on in that first half with, with Alabama fans watching the play calling of, of Lane Kiffin. I think, uh, I, you know, I must have gotten a dozen texts. If they run one more bubble screen or jet sweep, I'm going to shoot the TV. Um but clearly, Lane Kiffin had the last laugh again. As a, as a former player, Gene, I want you to try to explain why sometimes, and I'm not, you know, we weren't on the sidelines and you weren't either, but why sometimes an offensive coordinator in the first half may be running plays that don't look effective, but might be doing that to set up some things in, in the second half. And where I'm going with this is you get Ole Miss out on the perimeter, even though they're a very fast defensive team, you're not making yards, but you're spreading them out and it really seemed to open up that inside zone play for Jalen Hurts in the second half. Do you think that was part of his thinking, that he was doing some stuff to set up some different stuff in the second half? Oh, absolutely. And, and if you look at Lane Kiffin's history, uh, even back to last year, you know, you see all those little videos of where he's just running down the sidelines, he's got his arms up in the air because he knows it's going to be a touchdown. Well, you know, he didn't just call that play and know it was going to be a touchdown. He probably ran plays similar to that in the first half or saw things on film to set the defense up so that, you know, you might run a five-yard hook pattern, and then the next time the quarterback might do a pump fake, and then you run past the guy because you knew that he was just looking to get interception or looking to get a bite. And, you know, that's what film work comes in and and finding tendencies out about, you know, these defensive teams that we're playing against. And then in the game, you know, you might run a play, and, and as a fan you're going, what in the world are we doing, you know, running up the middle three times in a row? Well, they might want to see how those linebackers are reacting or see if the strong safety is just flying up. Because if he is, he's going to put a little mark on his little playbook in, in the second half, like you were saying earlier. He may call a play that, you know, a guy's going to run right past that linebacker and he took the wrong step and he's beat. So, uh, you know, Lane Kiffin knows exactly what he's doing. And, and I, I got the same text message. I, I kind of find it funny. People saying, oh, my gosh, well, you know, we need to get somebody else. And I'm thinking – you know, we just won a national championship uh, last year. We set the all-time passing record a couple years back, and we're starting a true freshman. It just won Offensive Player of the Week for the entire SEC. And, uh, you know, not every game's going to just fall into place where you're going to be 20 for 20 and rush for 500 yards. And, uh, you know, Coach Kiffin knows exactly what he's doing, and, uh, you know, I think he's doing a tremendous job. Let's talk about Jalen Hurts. Uh, We discussed him last week on the television show going into that game. He has poise. He has talent. He seems unflappable. He took that uh, he took that lick from Haynes right in the kisser, man. I mean, I I mean that was a shot, and uh, you know got up and and walked calmly off the field. Came right back in as we said, led his team to a touchdown. Your impressions of this guy, not only as as a football player and the talent that he brings, uh, the ability to throw the ball down the field kind of a glider when he runs he doesn't like he's going fast but yet he's he's making up big ground but also just his his uh his demeanor uh really 
I'm impressed. I mean, he doesn't come across as nervous, hasn't since he's come into the game. Uh, very unusual for a true freshman to be this accomplished. Well, I can tell you, Gary, I've been hit before where, you know, you just didn't quite see a guy coming. And, you know, it's one thing to watch it on television. It's another thing to actually experience the hit. I mean, I had a guy, you know, I've still got stitches, you know, that I had to get put into my chin. You know, Kurt Jarvis uh, back in the 80s hit me on the chin where I let one loose and I never saw him. And, I mean, I caught it around the chin. This was way before targeting. But, I mean, you're talking about a 290-pound guy, and I don't know what the guy for Ole Miss played, probably 275. But when they get ahead of steam, and they are wanting to just, I mean, knock your lights out. And uh, to get hit like that, for him to bounce back up and then to come back in and, and, you know, be fine after it, that shows a lot about, you know, how tough the kid is. But like you were saying earlier, uh, he's just he is so smooth in the pocket. He's got great feet. And I don't know what he runs a 40 in, but you can see once he gets some steam – uh, built behind him. I mean, he's fast, but I think the thing that it, with him is he's very, very quick. You know, some guys may not run a fast 40, but from the first, you know, uh, first 10 yards, they're as quick as anybody. And he can get away from trouble. He look, makes it look effortless. And uh, he's going to get better and better. you got to realize he just started his third game. And, uh, you know, he, I thought he played extremely well on the road and, and with the things that were being thrown at him. So all he's going to do is continue to improve, but the biggest thing to me, uh, like you're saying, is demeanor. Uh, he, it looks like the team looks to him at this point already. You know, they're patting him on the head if something bad happens, and he's patting him on the head when something good happens, which is what a quarterback wants to do. you got to praise those guys when their heads are down. And uh, I, just, I think his future is just uh, you know, it, it's unlimited. When you play a game like that and you leave it all out on the field – Fortunately, Alabama got the victory, but regardless, it was a, an exhausting game, a taxing game, a physical game, and you know you've got to come back and play the next week. How beneficial, and no disrespect to Kent State, but how beneficial is it for Alabama that this is Kent State and not, say, Texas A&M that they get on Saturday at Bryant-Denny Stadium? Well, maybe from an injury standpoint, uh, it's good, but you know, there's one thing I've learned uh, watching Coach Tate over the years is you know, the games that he gets just, I mean, the most heated and the, the maddest are the teams that we are supposed to beat by three and four and five touchdowns, whatever it might be. And uh, because, you know, it's like I was saying Saturday on the show, Alabama has to play to a standard. We don't play to our opponent. So if we're playing Kent State, West Kentucky, or if we're playing Auburn, you've got to play to that standard that you've already set, which is, you know, one of the elite teams in college football. So I think what we need to do Saturday more than anything is just eliminate all those mistakes. We've got so many penalties, a lot of motion penalties that shouldn't be happening, guys that are, you know, juniors and and have been there. And, uh, you know, we need to clean up a lot of that type stuff. But also it'll give – if the starters can come in and play well, it gives some of these younger guys a chance to get experience. That's what games like this do. And uh, you want to get, you know, some of those guys that maybe – you know, they might get five plays their whole career, and it might be if we get up 35 to nothing. So, you know, games like Kent State are important. Uh, you, you can rest your starters after they play a certain amount. and uh, But also, you still want to play at your very best, and you want to be sharp, and I think that's what they'll do Saturday. Yeah, speaking of that, Blake Barnett uh, figures to get some playing time. When you came to Alabama as a highly touted quarterback out of Blytheville, Arkansas, you were – in this position you know you battle for a job you don't win it only one guy gets to be the quarterback the starting quarterback what is the challenge for the backups guys who are obviously disappointed that they're not in that role but yet you're part of a team you're still trying to prepare to be ready to play if you're Cooper Bateman and Blake Barnett what's the biggest challenge of being the backup quarterbacks on a team and still trying to be involved and and be a good teammate how how difficult is that well i don't think it's difficult to be a good teammate i mean that's something that's on each individual because you can get up every day and make a decision you know hey i'm gonna be positive about this and then that's what i had to do i mean i was disappointed believe me you know when i was sitting there going uh you know i felt like i should maybe be playing and and you're not but you got to go out and say hey look i'm gonna study as hard as i can i'm gonna get these guys together and if I'm on the sidelines, I'm going to make sure every signal that I put into the game is the correct one. If a guy comes to the sideline, I'm going to say, hey, this is what I saw. And I feel like if for Blake and them, they, what they have to be careful with is when they get in the game is to not feel like there's so much pressure on them 
like, okay, I might be the backup, but this is my chance to shine and, and try to do things outside of yourself. You know, all you're supposed to do is go in. we got a play called, run the play as it is, and if you get a chance to make a big play, you take it, but also don't try to do too much with it because what will happen is you put this pressure on yourself and then you perform poorly, and it, it's just it, it can be a really, really bad road. So, you know, my advice to them is just go out and have fun, you know, uh, run the plays that are in there. And then, you know, uh, well, there's going to be other games down the road where we might not just play one guy. And, and also, you're only one play away, just like Saturday. You know, Jalen could have been injured, and Blake might have had to finish that game. So you, mentally and, and during practice, you better be ready and sharp all the time. In the meeting rooms. And uh, and I think that's I think that's what these guys are doing. I know Cooper's been there, and uh, he, he's kind of been used to this role. Wrapping up with former Alabama quarterback and tight end Gene Newberry, you have been watching these Nick Saban teams uh, very closely since Saban came to Alabama. The championship teams. I know we're only three games in, but what is what's your what's your feeling on on this team? Uh, I know there's a lot of football left, as I said, a lot of hurdles. But do you get the do you get an inkling that this is a championship caliber club? Well, it is early, like you said. But I will tell you, after the Ole Miss game, you can see how these guys pull together. And and what you what you want to look for, you know, there's there's sometimes where you got a team say maybe the offense is just terrible and the defense is great. So what you have to to guard against in that in that form is with if the offense is not scoring touchdowns, you don't want the defensive guys going. Oh man, come on, we're having to carry everything. You want both sides to feel like they're contributing. You want special teams to feel that way. Even these guys that cover kickoffs, maybe all they do—that's all they do all year—is cover kickoffs. You want them to do it to their hundred percent all the time. And I think that's what Alabama's doing now. And as I was saying earlier, I think this team—if we could just cut down the turnovers—we get into so many situations where we got first and ten, and a penalty flag goes, or you know second down and three yards which should be a very manageable amount and the next thing you know you got a 10 yard penalty so if we can cut out the penalties continue i know Jalen's going to continue to progress continue to get the offensive line gelling together and running the ball we have such just outstanding you know playmakers i mean and it's not just one or two i mean we got several playmakers and i think you know our defense already stands for itself i think it's just a want to with them as much as they want it um, it's out there for them to go and get. They can shut teams down. And even in the SEC, when it's going to be a little bit tougher, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to play against our defense. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be just a, a tremendous end of the year for us. Terrific stuff, Gene. Good to catch up with you. Thanks for coming on the program. Hey, thanks for having me.